The mini machines are fantastic. The Super Nintendo Mini in particular is very versatile in the things you can put on there. The PlayStation Mini is versatile as well. However, the Mega Drive Mini, often overlooked as an emulation machine. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can hack, sorry, how you can modify your Sega Mega Drive or Genesis Mini to be able to play other Mega Drive games. In further videos, I'm gonna show you how to do it so you can put other emulators and stuff like that on there, if you wanna have a go yourself. Uh, however, I've got to warn you, anything you try as a result of this video, I'm not liable for any of it. Do it at your own risk, although the, the risks of uh, bricking it or doing anything bad to it are pretty limited and it's all fully reversible anyway. So, without further ado, we're going to go over to the computer and we're going to start the modification of your Mega Drive Mini. So we're over on the computer now, guys, and the program that you're going to have to download to be able to mod your Sega Mega Drive Mini is a program called Hackchi. And where you're going to get it from is this website here and I will put the link in the description as well so you know how to get there if you click that link there and it gives you a bit of a, a brief overview of Hackchi 2 CE 3.8.0 which is up to press today the most recent uh, iteration of that program it gives you a bit of information about the new things that you've got down there but what we're interested in apart from the special thanks to the testers now I'm just someone that knows how to use it it's these guys as well the developers that have uh, put the hard work into making sure this works so, so thanks for, thanks for your guys there thanks for you guys so a bit further down here you've got your options to do it now you it's up to you which one you want to download either the debug the installer or just the release uh, however in this instance I'm going to download the installer so I'm going to set that off download and while I talk to you the debug meant the debug one just gives you a debug code which goes in the background screen you see that on a black kind of it looks like a command prompt screen it gives you a rundown of what's happening so in case it's frozen you can see things are actually happening in the background so we're going to download that save that to where you want to go uh, save that to wherever you want to do it and install it i'll go and install it and i'll show you what that looks like when i do so we've got actually installed and opened up for the first time and it automatically defaults to the uh, nes uh, games list on here now with this program you can uh, hack or mod, don't like the word hack, uh, the NES, the Super Nintendo Mini or the Sega Genesis as well. Now because we've got the Sega Genesis or the Sega Mega Drive Mini, I'm going to click on Sega Mega Drive Mini, obviously, because that's what we're doing. That tells the, the program exactly what we're going to be doing. Now you see down here, it's got all the games that as at, at stock come with all the... Uh, uh, with all the Sega Mega Drives as they're shipped. Now, we don't particularly interest in any of these because we know what's on there anyway. Jobs are good. And so we're going to go to view the original games. Well, we don't want to see them. And that gives us a nice blank, a blank page there. Now, the first thing that we need to do is actually put a bit of software on the Sega, uh, Sega Mega Drive Mini. We're going to flash it. We're going to install a, a, a custom kernel. Sounds more scary than it really is, but don't worry, it's really not. Now, to do this, you need a... Uh, USB to C cable. Now the one that comes with the Sega Mega Drive Mini doesn't actually work because you need a one that's got a data cable running through it as well. So if this doesn't work or it doesn't pick up your Sega Mega Drive Mini, it's because you've got the incorrect kind of cable. The one that comes with the Super Nintendo Mini works absolutely fine and that's the one I'm going to be using today. But the one that comes with the Sega Mega Drive Mini doesn't work. So just bear that in mind when you start doing this. So get my wire loose so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just uh start with the process now you go, go up to kernel go to install repair and it asks you if you want to flash the custom kernel yes i do so what now it gives you a bit of instructions what to do there so it's telling me to unplug the usb cable from the mini turn the power switch onto the on position and whilst holding reset button plug the usb cable into mini so i'm going to do that now so you hold reset button and then we plug it back in and after a couple of seconds, you'll see it's starting to do something here. So we'll let that run through. And what that's going to do is that's going to put the custom kernel onto the uh, Mega Drive Mini. So we'll just watch what happens when we do that. When you hear that beep, you can let go of the reset button. And it's starting to upload the kernel now. Now what it's doing is it's starting to, uh, to mod your Mega Drive Mini so you can start uploading games onto it and start doing what you want with it. Now in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to put extra Mega Drive games on there. However, you can put other formats, Super Nintendo, NES, various other as well. And I'll do that on future videos. But for the time being, I'm just going to show you how to do the Mega Drive games. So we'll let that uh, complete. We'll fast forward it and we'll come back at the end of it. So 
So when they get this message up, that means it's done. You have successfully hacked, modded, updated the firmware, put the new kernel on your Super, on not on your Super Nintendo, that was my last video I did, on your Sega Mega Drive Mini. So if you click OK on there, you'll see in the bottom left hand corner now, you've got a green light. That means it's successfully connected to your Mega Drive. Over here, it tells you how many, uh, how much memory you've got free on your Sega Drive Mini. Now, that's going to hold a hell of a lot of games, because you've got to remember, these 16-bit games do not take up a lot of space. Now, a few of the games, in fact, most of the games will work with the custom emulator that's in the Sega Mega Drive Mini. However, what we're going to do is we're going to now install another emulator for a few of the games that don't work. So to do that, we need to go to Modules. We need to go to KMFD's Mod Hub. Now, that guy there keeps this updated. He's always adding new things on there. It's a fantastic resource, and we've got to put a kudos out to this guy. He knows exactly what he's doing, and without him, a lot of this wouldn't happen. We're gonna, You can have a look at this in your own time, but we're going to put RetroArch on here. Now, the one I always use, because I'm old school, is RetroArch 184 Extreme RGUI. So we're going to download that. Now, that's going to download RetroArch to your computer. It's not going to put it on the Mega Drive Mini, because we're going to do that shortly. It's going to put it onto the computer for us, okay? And when we go to the core, the cores are basically the new emulators. So the RetroArch is the front end, if you like, and the cores are the emulators that the front end uses. So we need to go down to the Mega Drive, Sega Mega Drive or Genesis. Uh, da, 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 da. Can I find these when I want them? Uh, Sega, Sega, Sega Mega Drive. Uh, where's the one I want? Ah, sorry, miles away. Sega Genesis Extreme GX. So we're going to click that and we're going to download the module on there as well, okay? We're also going to download Pico Drive. Now, Pico Drive is the one um, that I use most out of all of them. Uh, Pico Drive works well with most of them. So you've downloaded them too there and that gives you the most options available in case your games don't work. Now, some of these are trial and error. Some of the, A lot of the games work with the custom emulator, but some of them don't. So I'm going to show you how to change the emulator that you're going to use. So we're going to wax that there. Now we need to install them mods onto your Sega Genesis. So you go to modules. We're going to install the extra modules. We're going to click the cores, the two cores, and then RetroArch that we chose as well. And we're going to click OK. All being well, it's going to install them into the Mega Drive. So again, I'll just let that run through. And that's that bit done. Now that's as simple as that. That's for if you're only going to put Mega Drive games on there, that's as much as you need to do. All you need to do now is put the actual games into your system. I'm going to show you how to do that now. One thing I do like to do as well, the when you load up the Mega Drive Mini for the first time, you get a hacked your boot splash screen. Now I don't like that because it just automatically looks like it's been modded. We know we do, but we don't really want to be sure. I don't like showing that. So if you go to tools and to boot splash, if you click reset to default done that's it it puts your splash screen as default rather than putting hack on there which i think looks a lot better right onto the games and onto the main event so i've got some mega drive game roms here i'm not going to tell you where to get them from google is your friend but i'm not going to advertise that on here and i'm just going to put a couple into the system here and there's a couple of ways you can do it. you can either drag them in or you can click add more games so we've got to click add more games we're going to go to my desktop uh, Mega Drive ROMs. Now we're here, we've just got to pick a few. Now there's one that I particularly want, it's Turtles Hyperstone Heist, because that, I'm going to show you how to change the uh, the ROM for the uh, the emulator for that, because it doesn't tend to work that well. And then we're going to put, I don't know, Sensible Soccer, uh, and maybe, uh, what other one should we put on? Just pick one, Phil. Uh, we're going to put Mortal Kombat, okay? Then we're going to, you click Open. And what that does is, that starts processing these games, getting ready to go onto your Mega Drive Mini. And it inserts them into Hackchi for future use. So there you go. We've got the three games there. As you can see, the number's gone up. It's not that many megabytes compared to what we're going to need, which is really, really good. So now if we just click Synchronize Games with the Mini, it's going to put them on the Mini. Jobs are good. But one of the beauties of these small systems is that you can put box art on there. And the way we do that, so if you click on Mortal Kombat, say for example, the, the box art is blank. It's just going to show that on the screen, which isn't very good to anybody. It's not what we want. So you highlight them all. Right button, download box app for selected games, click that. What that does is that goes to Google and tries to find box art for all of these games. 
Now, sometimes it's fantastic, it finds the right one. Sometimes it's really awful. But it's, comp it's again, we're going to go and check them now. I'm going to show you how to do it. So if we click on Mortal Kombat, see it's found the Mortal Kombat 2 box art for some reason, which is going to look awful. So what we do in that case is you click Google. And then that's going to fetch up all the Google images that it can find for the Mortal Kombat box art. So after I've let it run through there, I've just seen that it hasn't really got any good box art for Mortal Kombat, which gives me a good chance to show you the new fe another feature that they've got. So if you exit out of that, if you go to Browse, and then you can actually put in your own images. There you go. So if you double click it, let that run through, let that save it, it will put in here the box art for the uh, game that you've just downloaded. There we go. So that's bobbed up with Mortal Kombat Genesis in there, so that's good. Now, one of the good things about the Genesis as well is it shows you the spine. So you can actually put a spine uh, art in there as well. So if you click spine button, it'll try and find the spine art as well for you. So let's have a look at this. So in here, uh, so we found the Mortal Kombat logo there. So if we click that one, you've got the choice of which background that you want on there as well. So because we are in uh, Mega Drive in Europe and it came in blue, I think this one, I can't remember from the top here, but we'll put blue because I like that one. Click that button. And there you go, it puts the Mortal Kombat spine in there for you. So when you open up the game on the Sega Genesis, it will show that on the screen. So we'll go down the other one, it's a sensible soccer. See, it's found, the, uh, it's found the, the, the artwork good for that, so we're going to go for spine again. So, sensible soccer. Uh, Genesis America dot. There we go. We'll have that one. And our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hypersawn Heist. We are going to put the spine in for that as well. Click that button, and that is a let's have a one of them done. Okay, now we did say earlier that Tage Root that Hyperstone Heist doesn't really work well with the uh, with the inbuilt emulator. So I know that already because I've, I've played with it before. So the way we're going to change that is you go to the actual game, you click the right button, select emulation core, it fetches up this screen. If you select the game, Mega Drive, select Pico Drive. It changes the command line down the bottom and click apply. As soon as you've clicked apply, go to close. It goes down there. So one thing that I like to do before I actually upload them to the mini is click on structure. If you click on structure, and this tells the uh, the, the Mega Drive mini how to actually structure the games once they're on your system. If you click on disable page and folders, it means that all the new games that you put on there are going to be incorporated with your old games, which is the way I like it. The Mega Drive's got no upper limits to how many games can be in the folders. So click on structure, disable, and then when you're ready to do that, you can put the actual games onto your Mega Drive Mini. Now that's all. That's it all set up. So we've got Mortal Kombat, Sensible Soccer, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It is now just a case of clicking this button. done that's it that's the three new games been put on your sega mega drive mini so what we're going to do now is i'm going to go and plug the sega mega drive mini into the capture card so you can have a look at it and i'll show you what that looks like on the screen so as you can see we've come over to the main mega drive menu now we've loaded it up and we've bobbed it onto the screen uh one thing to note is i'm running through 30 frames a second on this so it might not be as smooth as what you would actually see it but that's just my capture card so anyway if we go down here you'll see there's Mortal Kombat 2, look, uh, sorry Mortal Kombat, looking quite nice there. We've got Sensible Soccer and we've got Turtles of Hyperstone Heist as well, quite happy. So we're going to go into Turtles Hyperstone Heist first because I need to show you how to exit the games when you've got them using the RetroArch cores rather than the native emulator. So we're going to Turtles Hyperstone Heist. So we're going to let that load up. And the reason we use another emulator for this is because the native emulator doesn't play a sound for the Hyperstone Heist for whatever reason, but hopefully this will work fine. Oh, there we go, that's a good start. Let's kick shell. It's got to be Donatello. Every day of the week. Let's go, let's see what's going on. So this game's just a direct uh, lift from... Uh, Turtles in Time, the arcade game. It's not direct, there's a few differences, but that's where this game came from. So can you hear we've got the music? Donatello kicking up, kicking backside, kicking shell. There we 
go. Right, we'll exit out of this now. Now, to exit out of a, a Retro Arch game using another emulator or another core, you simply get the reset button on the front of the Mega Drive and press it quickly twice. So, like this. And then that quits the emulator and it takes you back to the main screen so you can pick another game. So if we have a look, now we're back on the main menu again at the uh, the sides, the uh, spines. You can see there's Turtles on there, okay. There's Mortal Kombat and there's Sensible Soccer as well, so they all work. So just to go back, I'm going to finish this off by going into Mortal Kombat. If you just press the A button again, it'll load it up and show you the Mortal Kombat gameplay footage. And if there's anything else that you want me to show you how to mod with the Sega Mega Drive or even the, the Super Nintendo Mini as well, let me know. Put it in the comments and I'll quite happily uh, go away and put a video together to show you how to do it. I am intending on doing some more videos shortly with telling you how to put Super Nintendo games on here, NES games, all that kind of good stuff. So I'm going to leave you with some footage of Mortal Kombat then showing you getting out the game. The same way as you do with any other game on here, you just keep your finger on the start button and select the menu. So I'll show you a bit of gameplay footage first. Gotta be Scorpion, gotta be Scorpion in this game. But thanks for watching guys. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and you'll see some more uh, some more videos come your way shortly. Uh, but that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again.